Okay, this is my first um, full face video, and I'm trying to read my testimony. Um, I tried to record on my iPad, but it didn't turn out, and I apologize for the washed out lighting. Um, the lighting situation has sort of been kind of tricky uh, because I'm trying to switch. Anyway, I tried to record in front of the green screen, it didn't turn out with the iPad, and my videos are too long for me to record on the nice camera for now. So I'm having to just record on the uh, iMac. So I hope that this is okay. Um, you know, all your feedback is welcome um, about what you would like to see. Um, so hopefully I can start filming soon somewhere else using the iPad and it will have a little bit better um, video quality. So um, yeah, let me know in the comment section how you feel about this setup except for the background and all that, but if it, like I had the green screen in the background and maybe some, you know, different lighting effects uh, using, uh, like, uh, little tiny lights for relaxation purposes, if you would like that as well. So, this is long, I have to warn you. Um, I recorded the other video and it was um, about 30 minutes, 28 minutes. So, uh, I'll try to pick it up a little bit and go a little faster. Okay, so hopefully you find this relaxing. If not, I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, the last video I was whispering and it was slower. So, um, just, you know, so thanks for listening. Okay, um, so, hi. Um, God saved me in February of 2009. And um, I haven't been the same since. You know, I didn't grow up as a Christian, uh, in a Christian household, and um, but I always had a fascination with religion and considered myself spiritual. I collected Bibles, but never really read them. I always sensed a presence that there was something else out there, and um, I believed that when we died, drifted from this dimension into the next place where there was no heaven and no hell. This meant that the God I believed in didn't really have any control, nor did he really want to have a personal relationship with his people. Uh, I went to a local church um, for a short time when I was about seven years old, and um, then a few other churches at various points and times in my life. Sadly, at those churches, I don't think anyone taught me about uh, sin, righteousness, judgment or um, even repentance and faith. I don't remember hearing a biblical presentation of the gospel. At one of these places someone asked me, is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Yes, I emphatically said. I felt really good about my profession of faith. I would created another Jesus, not the one in the Bible, but one that I would fashioned according to my own desires. I was so deceived, which makes sense because the Bible says that the heart is deceitful above all things and is exceedingly corrupt. Who can know it? Uh, I was a false convert who had made a false profession. I didn't believe that the Bible was the word of God. I also believed that all the religions uh, were true and led to salvation effectively. I obviously had never taken the time to study logic. I remember one time specifically uh, being in a motel hotel. I was looking at a Bible and wondering uh, how strange it was that I had considered myself to be a Christian but didn't desire to read what Christian actually said was God's word. So um, I just remember telling myself that uh, it was hard to understand. I told myself and it eased my conscience. I was like, yeah, it is hard to understand. That's why I don't read it. Um, this was not the fruit of a Christian, clearly. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Peter 2.2 2, that we didn't need to desire scripture like newborn babies longing for the pure milk of the word so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. However, I didn't want truth. I wanted the world. Hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. Um, I had no idea that the world would never satisfy the emptiness within me spiritual emptiness that I was trying to 
filled with the world can only be filled with Jesus Christ. I had no peace at all. I had no hope. I was a complete slave uh, to my sin. I worried a lot about money, my health and dying. Um, it would keep me up all night sometimes until the rising sun chased my fears away. I often had paralyzing uh, fear about dying in my sleep and wondered where will I go when I die? What will I hold on to when I swing out into eternity? In order to ease my conscience, I would repeat prayers like, Jesus, forgive me. Somehow, repeating that mantra-like prayer was like rubbing a rabbit's foot. And, um, good luck, Charm. And, you know, I couldn't cast my anxieties onto God because uh, I didn't have the Holy Spirit or a tangible God to hold on to. I only had my vain imaginations. So... I had no peace at all, and I had no hope, and I was a complete slave to my sin. I worried a lot. That's, that's about it. I worried a lot. I would stay up all night, um, often, all night, because I was just so deathly afraid and paralyzed, and I think you know, God used my uh, anxiety problem to keep me in a position where I never felt truly safe. Um, so I couldn't stay too comfortable forever in my, you know, my deluded thinking. So I remember when I was about 15, um, I was wondering how to be saved. Uh, someone I knew had just been baptized. And uh, he said he'd joined a church, so he told me, because um, I asked, well, what do you have to do to be, be saved or whatever? And he just told me that um, I just need to ask Jesus into my heart. And um, he led me into a, a sinner's prayer, which you can't even find in the Bible. And, you know, that sounded um, like a pretty good idea at the time to me. Uh, I mean, it was good enough for him, and he seemed to like it, so anyway, I decided to do the same. So I repeated uh, that prayer, and um, I got my inoculation. So, But I did expect something dramatic to happen. Um, after Jesus had come into my heart, you know, I expected, um, you know, bells to chime. Like in the Disney movies, or I, I remember uh, it's like a flashbulb memory where I expected just you know music to play in the background or something, and just for it to be just magical. And uh, so I was disappointed when nothing happened. So I repeated the prayer, not genuinely repenting and trusting in Jesus, and waited for the bells to chime. But you know I felt nothing. And um, I wasn't moved emotionally. The music didn't swell to a you know a crescendo, and bells didn't chime. I was the same, and my stony heart remained within me. I thought, "Wow, is that it?" I felt dismayed and disappointed that nothing had happened. Of course, being true to my real sinful nature as a natural man, I went back to the world. I experienced no real repentance and did truly have saving faith in Jesus. I knew about Jesus, but he didn't know me in a salvific sense. So I continued living my life, um, thinking that I was a good person, compared, and I compared myself to other people. As long as I was living a more moral life than most, I felt justified. However, I was a self-righteous, judgmental um, Pharisee, really. I put on a mask of goodness around other people so that others would believe that I was good and moral and um, all that. But instead of truly repenting before God and um, I care about the praise of man, man instead of God more, you know, was more important. And my heart was hardened as that continued on. 
in my sin. And my conscience was, you know, pretty seared as well at that point. Um, I could easily rationalize my sin and I didn't care about God watching me or judging me. It was not an issue to me. I didn't feel anything. Um, I didn't have any great thoughts about God, good or bad. I, it's as if God was not there at all. Um, I didn't know who God was. I didn't even know what my purpose was. Um, so I didn't know Jesus in a salvific sense. He didn't know me. Um, and I continued living my life, you know, thinking that I was a good person. Um, so later on, um, when I went to school for college, um, I chose a Christian school, sort of, it's a Christian name, and they uh, make you take Bible classes and um, forced you to do it. Um, but, so I wasn't very enthousi enthusiastic about it, um, and I saw Jesus as like a historical figure. So, but you know, God used that and the cogs in my head began turning. Um, I started watching YouTube videos uh, about atheism and Christianity for fun. Uh, I felt compelled to watch, you know, testimonies, supposed testimonies of people who had died and went to heaven or hell. And it scared me mainly. It um, made me really think about um, why I was here and what was going to happen after I died and all of that. And so. Um, I really started thinking at that time, too, um, about how going to church might be a good idea. And um, I also saw at the time videos of the Westboro Baptist Church um, holding signs up saying, you know, God loves you, God hates you. And um, I remember thinking, why does God hate me? Why are they holding up signs saying that? Um, for what reason? And uh, I had decided to research where they were getting that from, and um, that led me to kind of learn and read more about um, doctrines like depravity and um, things like that. Total depravity. Uh, so I didn't realize at the time that I was the one who hated God and was separated and uh, didn't love God and didn't love God's word and his precepts or any of that. And so, uh, about that time, the Holy Spirit started convicting me of the things that I had been, you know, desensitized to for a long time. Um, things that I didn't even feel guilty about uh, anymore. But it was like as if a supernatural force came and took a hot scalpel and shaved off that layer of hardened skin where I could feel again, since my sin, I was under, uh, I could feel convicted of the things uh, that I wasn't convicted of for a long time, it was as if uh, my conscience became alive. Uh, so that really confused me. I was like, I was in a whirlwind of confusion. Uh, at the time, you know, I didn't know I was under conviction. I was just really confused um, because things that I thought were good, some of these things, uh, I'd been calling good for quite a while. I realized we're really evil and it just made it so I just didn't trust myself anymore. And um, I was just very confused and scary. Uh, so I, I felt unclean and I couldn't trust myself and started questioning like what's wrong with me and stuff like that and I'm losing my mind. Um, I really did feel that way. And um, I felt really disgusted with myself all the time. And uh, the layers of self-righteousness that I had began to come un apart off of me. Like, it was an unlayering effect um, to where I was really raw. And it came to a point where it just grew and intensified. And, um, you know, I couldn't take the guilt and fear and shame anymore. And um, until the day when, you know, God really opened my eyes to show me who I really was. And those feelings of despair were so strong that I went 
into another room to, to explain to someone um, what was going on with me and I said something like and I remember I went to this person and they weren't a Christian so I said to them like I don't want God to hate me I, I feel guilty and tired and I just want forgiveness and well uh, expectantly that person looked at me like I was insane you know didn't say anything um, might have said what's wrong with you uh, so, but I still remember that per perplexed look that they gave me it's weird um, they didn't get it so um, I felt like they, were, they weren't going to be able to help me so I went uh, on my own into another room and got on my knees and just began to cry out to God um, and I closed my eyes and I had this like vision in my head um, of a, just a flood of thoughts and images in my head and that moment I could uh, feel you know God's hatred toward me let me explain that what I mean by that um, I really felt this revelation that you know it's really disturbing and frightening to me um, that uh, I could feel God's burning hatred against me that I was a child of wrath and um, John 3 36 says he who believes in the Son has eternal life but he who does not obey the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. And so I knew at that time that I had not fully obeyed the Son by putting my faith in him because I was trusting in myself effectively. Um, I was my own God. I was my own Savior. And um, I was a barren tree, not producing any fruit, in keeping with real repentance. Um, 1 John 16 says, if we say that we have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. I wasn't loving God, um, but I was showing my hatred toward him by, you know, being defiling myself and not crying out to him for salvation. Uh, in John 1, 3, 8, it says, the one who practices sin is of the devil, uh, for the devil sinned from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works the devil and uh, waves of this revelation overtook me and washed over me and I began realizing who I was a slave to I knew that at that moment before Christ came that um, into my life who my father was um, and it shook my entire uh, being I was a child of uh, Satan he was my father he was my master and I realized at that moment uh, I wasn't a Christian either. I didn't love God. I hated him. I was obeying and acting just like my father, the, the devil. Um, Jesus said to the Jews in 844, You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language for he is a liar and the father of all lies. I loved him deeply even though he offered me nothing but lies, deceit, and destruction. God in his mercy pulled back the mask off of Satan and revealed his true nature to me, revealing his ugly, horrible countenance. Contemplating this idea was life-altering and destroyed any concept about my identity. I thought I was a loving, godly, spiritual person. I was dead wrong. Immediately, I realized I had been and would be continue to be under a delusion. And I was blind, helpless, vile, without hope, and at the mercy of my father, the, the liar. Unless God saved me and filled me with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit says in 2 Thessalonians 2.11, And for this God shall cause them, uh, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, and that was me. God showed me that I was spiritually blind, walking around in the dark, heading straight for a fiery abyss where there'd be no escape, no peace, but weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth for eternity. My mind could not fathom such a fate as this. I compared and contrasted myself against the holiness of God. In the moment, I felt this tremendous weight of my sin swell in contrast to this holy, infinite, and perfect God. Feeling like I deserve punishment for my cosmic treason, I began imagining myself being cast into the lake of fire and simultaneously glorifying God. Uh, 
for his righteous judgment against me. At that moment, God showed me that I wasn't appointed for wrath. Just before I could feel condemned, it was if the person of Jesus Christ um, came down and visited me on my knees in my living room. The love of God washed over me. In my mind, I could see heaven opened up to me where Jesus was seated, high upon his throne, shining more brilliantly than anything else. He was more desirable than anything else to me at that moment. I saw the truth for the first time. I was able to see the endless riches and the treasures that are in Jesus. He became precious to me my entire life. God compelled me to run to him through the narrow gate to flee from the wrath to come. I saw two paths in my mind. One is lit by light from the Lord of glory and leads to eternal life. There is another which is dark, miserable, deceitful, and leads to the lake of fire. I didn't want to stay a slave to, to Satan anymore or be under the power of his lies. I didn't want to swallow lies anymore. I wanted truth. I didn't want deception and I didn't want to continue to deceive others. Jesus said in John 8.32, And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. I wanted the truth that God revealed to me that Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life. And he gave me a heart that desired to worship him. I remember saying something to this effect. Jesus, I love you. I want to follow you. Take my life. It's yours already. Save me. I know that I don't, that if I don't trust in you, uh, the trust and merit in my own goodness to get into heaven, that you will deny me because you see me wicked to the core. I won't have any power over my sin in my life, but will be controlled by the devil as long as I live. I need you protecting me, shielding me, and guiding me. Uh, nothing exists but you. Let me follow you every day of my life. Um, protect me and teach me. I love you. Um, Ephesians 2, 8 says, For by grace you have been saved uh, through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. I don't remember if it was the next day or directly after that, but I remember looking around, and it was as if I could see with a brand new pair of of eyes. God had changed me and had taken out my heart of stone and given me a heart of flesh. Uh, Jesus died on the cross as my substitute, my sin offering. Now I don't have to face the wrath of God, so I'm forgiven, not guilty. He paid the infinite debt that I couldn't pay. He died and rose from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Because he lives, I have eternal life. He works all things for my good and his glory. I have hope that no one can take from me. I am a child of the Lord of all creation, God Almighty. I'm a vessel of mercy. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 so salvation is a miracle. It's by God's infinite wisdom and mercy that he took the scales off my eyes, gave me a revelation of who I am, who he was, and he saved me from his wrath. He saved me effectively from himself so that I could be, I could be accepted because God is holy and sinners will not stand in his presence. God is... Um, He's set apart, he's holy, and we're not. We're sinful, unredeemed, um, hostile towards God. God must change us in order for us to love him. And so, um, if you have any questions, um, any comments, I'm more than happy to talk to you, interact with you. But um, I don't do debates and things like that. Uh, I had my fair share. But um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Um, so I hope that this video uh, is relaxing as much as possible. I apologize for the audio and um, it didn't turn out exactly like I thought, but um, until I get the setup fixed for the recordings and all that, it's sort of going to be um, a continuous sort of work in progress until I can get my setup correct.
Um, I kind of have a cold right now too, so my voice is extra hoarse, and I apologize for that as well. So um, thanks a lot, and um, I hope you have a great, guys, have a great night. God bless.